Checking the tires. Tires are one of the most common vehicle-related factors for large trucks in fatal crashes, according to the FMCSA. This isn't a surprise, since the tires on your vehicle take a lot of abuse, and they aren't designed to last forever. Checking and maintaining them properly is key in keeping you, Rick, and other drivers around you safe. ICD stands for the three main things you and Rick can check for when inspecting each tire on your tractor and trailer. Inflation. Make sure you know the correct pressure for your tires. According to the ATA Technology and Maintenance Council, the life of a tire that is consistently 20% underinflated is reduced by 30%. 40% underinflation reduces tire life by 50%. Condition. There should be no cuts, rips, or tears. Dual tires should never be touching each other or any other component. Depth. The major grooves on each steer tire should be 3 mm or 4 seconds of an inch and 1.5 mm 2 seconds of an inch on any other tire. Take note of the depth of the other grooves as well. Use a tread depth gauge or use the coin method. Also, take note of distortion, uneven edges or dips in the tread which may indicate wheel alignment problems or bent suspension parts. Click the links for more information on each of these. Inflation. Tires normally leak through air valve caps or small punctures, and pressure should be checked with a gauge at least once per week. Tires will also lose pressure as the temperature decreases, so check more frequently when in the colder months. When inspectors see signs of underinflation, such as wear patterns on the sides of your tires, they will measure tire pressure. Overinflation is also a problem and is usually indicated by wear patterns in the center of your tires. Both underinflation and overinflation reduce tread life and compromise traction, stability, and safety. And to see problem tires. Condition. Anytime that a leak can be felt or heard from your tires, you should take action. Listen for leaks and look for bulges which could indicate a blowout. Also look for the following. Separation of tread or sidewall. Deep cuts or cracks that reveal the ply or belt beneath. Missing, damaged, or cracked valve stems or caps. Tires should be the same size and type. Don't use radial and bias ply tires on the same axle. Depth. In addition to checking for the minimum tread depth, look for worn treads and body ply or belts showing through the tread. Even though the regulations specify 3 mm or 4 seconds of an inch for the major groove on a steer tire and 1.5 mm or 2 seconds of an inch for all the others, during an inspection, CVSA will put you out of service when there are two adjacent grooves with a tread depth of 3 mm or 4 seconds of an inch on your steer tires. There are two adjacent grooves with a tread depth of 1.5 mm or 2 seconds of an inch on any other tire. Coin method of measuring tread depth. Place a quarter or a penny between the treads on your tire. Turn the coin upside down so that the top of the coin points down into the tread. Your tread depth can be estimated by how far the coin reaches into the tread of the tire. Wheels and rims. Wheel failure is especially dangerous. It can occur suddenly due to failed bearings and ineffective fasteners, rims, or hubs. When wheels fly off a vehicle, motors around your vehicle can be severely injured or killed. When you inspect your wheels, check the following. Lug nuts. Cracks, rust, or damage. Missing parts. Signs of leaking. Signs of welding. Click the links to see more information about lug nuts. Check the tightness of each lug nut on each wheel every time you conduct an inspection. Use both hands to test two lug nuts at a time and work your way around the wheel. Cracks, rust, or damage. Look for cracks or damage, especially starting at the lug nut holes. When you see rust around these areas, it is a sign that the wheels or rims are loose or damaged. 
Missing parts. Look for loose, missing, broken, cracked, or stripped fasteners, spacers, studs, lugs, clamps, and missing or damaged lock rings. Signs of leaking. Leaking lubricant from a wheel seal or leaking hub oil can contaminate the brakes and cause bearing failure. When you have a hub with a sight glass, check the oil level. Signs of welding. Welded repairs on aluminum wheels are not permitted. Checkpoint tires and wheels. Answer the following questions to see what you have learned so far. Lights and reflectors. Lights are another commonly cited violation, mainly because inspectors can easily see whether a light is functioning. Different jurisdictions in North America have slightly different rules for when lights must be used, but in general, there are two rules to follow. Turn on your lights when you are using your windshield wipers and in adverse conditions. Keep your lights on a half hour before sunset to a half hour after sunrise. Missing, damaged, inoperative, or defective lamps can cost you six points under CSA, so make sure that you check all of the following every time you conduct an inspection. Low beam headlamps, high beam headlamps, turning lights, four-way flashers, hazard lights, brake lamps, reflective material. During your inspection, turn on all the lamps to ensure they are functioning normally. Make sure that nothing is blocking any of the lamps on your vehicle. As you complete your walk around, clean all the glass, lights, and reflectors as you go. It's a good idea to have some spares if a light has burned out. For more information, click to see lighting requirements for trucks and trailers. Emergency equipment. You are required to carry emergency equipment with you on your vehicle. When you are transporting placarded hazardous materials, you must also carry emergency response information, such as the Emergency Response Guidebook. You must carry a properly filled and mounted fire extinguisher on your vehicle. The nozzle should be clear and the tip of the ring pin in place. The needle on the pressure gauge should be in the green area. Check the expiration date of the extinguisher. For vehicles carrying placarded hazardous materials, the extinguisher must be rated 10 BC. For all other vehicles, the extinguisher must be a single 5BC extinguisher or two 4BC extinguishers. Note, at the very least, fire extinguishers must be inspected monthly and the inspection recorded on the extinguisher's tag or in a file. Extinguishers should be maintained on an annual basis by a certified person. Hydrostatic testing and internal inspections are also required on a less regular basis. You must also have either three emergency reflective triangles or six fusees and or three liquid burning flares. It is also helpful to carry spare electrical fuses when the vehicle does not have circuit breakers. An accident notification kit and emergency numbers. Note, your carrier may require that you carry a fire extinguisher with a higher rating than the minimum, for example 40 BC instead of 10 BC for dangerous goods. Ask your carrier for more details about the emergency equipment you should be using. Checkpoint Lights and Emergencies Answer the following questions to see what you have learned so far.
Checking the brakes. When conducting an inspection, an inspector will put your vehicle out of service when the number of defective brakes is equal to or greater than 20% of the service brakes on the vehicle or combination. A regular commercial vehicle pulling a trailer will have about 10 brakes. If two are found to be defective, you will be placed out of service. So check all your brakes every time you head out. Inspect your brakes for damage during your walk-around inspection and for proper function during your in-cab brake tests. When inspecting trailer brakes, get underneath the trailer and use a flashlight. Always listen for audible air leaks. As you walk around your vehicle during the inspection, visually check each brake for the following. Condition. Look for damaged, missing, rusted or worn brake drums, hoses and shoes. Brake shoes should be evenly adjusted. Thickness of the brake lining. The brake lining shouldn't be less than 0.635 centimeters or one quarter of an inch. Brake adjustment. Measure each brake's pushrod stroke or slack to make sure that it is within the pushrod stroke limit. The importance of pushrod stroke. Measuring pushrod stroke, also known as travel or slack, is important to know as a driver as poorly adjusted brakes is the second most common violation, as well as the most common cause of brake failure. First, you must know the size of your vehicle's brake chambers and whether they are standard, short, or long stroke chambers. Each size and type has a different stroke limit as you can see in the chart. A Type 30 long stroke chamber will have a 64 mm or 2.5 inch stroke limit while a Type 24 standard chamber will only have 51 millimeters or 1 and 3 quarter inch. This is a 13 centimeter difference, more than half of an inch. Note, check with your carrier to find out the size of your vehicle's brake chambers. There are different methods of checking each brake's pushrod stroke. Electronic brake stroke indicators. Displays mounted on the instrument panel show when stroke is under, at, or over the limit. Brake adjustment must still be inspected, even when you are using these. Mechanical brake stroke indicators. When the brake is applied at 90 to 100 PSI, a visual indicator mounted onto the brake linkage will tell you when the brake is out of adjustment. Measuring tape. When you do not have other visual indicators, you can use measuring tape to determine your pushrod stroke. For more information, click the link to see the CVSA's frequently asked questions about brake inspections.
How to Measure Push Rod Stroke To properly determine your push rod stroke, you must look at the difference between how far the push rod travels when the brakes are released and when they are applied. This means that you will have to look at each brake twice. Remember to always check the stroke at the correct pressure of 90 to 100 psi, 621 to 690 kilopascals, and follow these steps. Step 1. Measure the stroke or slack when the brakes are released. Do this as you complete your first inspection of the rest of your vehicle. If you are using visual indicators, the red post will be to one side. If you do not have visual indicators, place a mark on the push rod at the base of the chamber. Step 2. Use your brake tool to apply the service brakes. Step 3. Apply the brakes as the last step of your inspection and check each brake again. Mechanical indicators should be positioned between the two posts. If you do not have indicators, measure the distance between the mark you made in step 1 and the base of the chamber. Click the links to see more information on measuring stroke. Checkpoint Measuring Pushrod Stroke Answer the following questions to see what you have learned so far. In-cab brake tests. Once you have visually inspected each brake for any damage or missing parts, listened for audible air leaks, and measured the pushrod stroke of each brake, your last inspection task is to perform the in-cab brake tests. To test your brakes, make sure you have removed the chocks from the vehicle. Then check the following. Tractor and trailer service brakes. Low air warning system. Air pressure buildup rate. Air Compressor Governor Settings Air Loss Rate Tractor Parking Brake Trailer Spring Brakes Anti-Lock Braking System Click the links to see more information on how to perform these tests. Tractor and Trailer Service Brake Put the truck in gear and drive slowly ahead. Keep your hands lightly on the steering wheel. To test the tractor service brake, press down on the foot pedal brake. The vehicle should come to a stop. If it jerks to one side or the other, it may mean that a brake is out of alignment and should be checked. To test the trailer service brake, pull the handle on the steering column or your instrument panel. The trailer should stop the vehicle. Low air warning system. Make sure the ignition is in the on or accessory position. Begin with your air pressure at 90 PSI or above. Pump the foot brake to fan off the air pressure down to 55 PSI. With the air pressure above 60 PSI, the warning lamp must be off. When the pressure falls below 55 PSI, the warning lamp and alarm must be on. Air Pressure Buildup Now that you have depleted the air during the low air warning system test, you can test how long it takes for it to build up again. 
This test does not need to be done with each inspection, but it should be done if you are driving an unfamiliar vehicle or you suspect something is wrong. Make sure the trailer supply valve is closed or pulled out. Maintain engine speed of 600 to 900 RPM and see how long it takes for the pressure to rise from 85 to 100 PSI. It should build up within two minutes. Air Compressor Governor Settings The governor controls when the air compressor will pump air into the air storage tanks. To test that it is working properly, follow these steps. Run the engine until the air brake system pressure reaches its maximum level and note the cutout pressure setting. It should be between 100 and 130 PSI. Press and release the brake pedal several times to lower the system pressure and note the cut-in pressure setting. It should be 80 PSI or higher. Air loss rate. Park your vehicle and release the spring brakes. Check that the air brake system is within its normal operating pressure range and turn off your engine. Press and hold the brake pedal all the way down so that it's fully applied. Note the pressure indicated on the primary and secondary air tank gauges. Note if there is any change in pressure after one minute. You are allowed to have a maximum air loss rate of 4 PSI. Tractor Parking Brakes Pull out the parking brake, the yellow button, to apply the parking brake. Make sure the trailer supply valve, the red button, is pushed in to release the trailer spring brakes. Drive forward slowly and the parking brake should tug at the vehicle. Trailer supply valve, spring brakes. Pull out the trailer air supply valve, the red button, to apply the trailer spring brakes. Make sure the yellow button is pushed in to release the parking brake. Drive slowly forward and the spring brakes should tug at the vehicle. Anti-lock braking system. Put your key into the ignition and turn the key into the on accessory position. Make sure your ABS malfunction indicator lights function as intended. The light should appear after 3 seconds and disappear after 3 seconds. If your lights fail to come on or turn off, there is a malfunction. Checkpoint Testing Brake Functionality Answer the following questions to see what you have learned so far. Topic 2 Review – Inspection Practices Rick knows that there are certain best practices to follow during an inspection, such as making sure he has all his tools and finding a safe and level place to complete the inspection. He knows he should use his hands to feel for defects, such as abrasions, cuts, and bulges throughout the inspection as well. Rick also understands that the most common infractions that result from roadside inspections are those around brakes, lights, and tires, and so he has reviewed how he should be inspecting these components on his vehicle. When he looks at his tires, he remembers the acronym ICD, Inflation, Condition, and Depth. He knows his tires will lose 2 to 3 PSI per week, and he must check them on a regular basis. He also knows it is very important to look carefully at the fasteners on his wheels and to check for leaking or signs of rust. Rick had not previously known how to check his air brakes properly. His safety manager has shown him how to measure his pushrod stroke, and he checks that as well as his general brake condition, looking for any loose or missing parts, as well as the thickness of his brake lining. Lastly, Rick has reviewed the in-cab brake tests he should be doing before he starts to drive. First, he tests the service brakes on both his tractor and trailer, as well as the tractor parking brake and the trailer spring brake. He checks his governor, his low air pressure warning system, and his air pressure buildup rate to make sure he and the drivers around him will be safe on the road.